All right, what's going on, everybody? So Crackdown 3, after many years of delay, um, after being announced in like 2013 or 14, was fi is finally being released tomorrow. And the embargo for any coverage review and reviews for the game uh, was up today. And a lot of the major publications um, released their reviews for Crackdown 3, and they haven't been good. Most of the re reviews are pretty bad to mediocre, a, a little bit mixed. Now, I had decided that I was not going to buy or play Crackdown 3, not because of any reviews, because I don't base my purchases um, on any reviews for games. I buy the game and then I make my own decision. I don't know if anybody, you know, realizes this, but most, all of these publication reviews, they're, they're just glorified opinions, right? So I don't, I never, never, ever, uh, use reviews as like a guide to me buying a game. I never do it. I was simply not going to buy this game just based on the gameplay that I saw. Because I, whether or not most of us realize it, we pretty much make the, the decision on if we're going to buy a game from like maybe the first few trailers of us seeing that game. We do, you know, eye test. It's, it's, we analyze the game just based on what we're, what we're seeing, not, vi not only visually, but gameplay wise. And that's why trailers are important. I think trailers are way more important than any, any review, right? So just from the, how the gameplay seemed from, you know, the trailers and the different demonstrations over the years, the game just wasn't looking very good to me, right? But I don't believe I can fu fully criticize this game and have, you know, full judgment of this game until I actually play it and beat it. And that's why I'm contemplating or at least thinking about it. Because I can say, you, you know, I'm okay with somebody saying a game, you know, apparently looks trash. You can say that all day long, but you can't actually declare it as that until you've actually, until you've actually played it. And if I, if I'm going to, you know, just objectively talk about this game you know i i do want to play it so I'm, I'm thinking about playing it um and you know just fairly judging it but so as i said the reviews came out and very very low very mediocre it's currently at a 60 at the time when i'm speaking it might drop to a, a 59 or maybe less because there are a few uh other um scores that have not came out yet and, you know, I participate in the jokes sometimes on Twitter and social media social media and everything like that. I think all that stuff is an all good fun. So I was, you know, laughing and joking and everything today. You know how Twitter gets. But underneath all of the jokes, you know, by the end of the day, I was honestly, I was like, it was, it was a little bit sad. It was a little bit depressing. What was a little bit sad and depressing was the damage control and i think some of the damage control is funny right it's i think some parts of it are all in entertainment but then it gets to it goes it passes the threshold from funny to legitimately sad pathetic and and just downright depressing right because in all of these jokes we make is the hope for better I think a lot of us honestly make these jokes because we want Microsoft and the Xbox brand to do better, to stop producing mediocre, lackluster products. And I said this on Twitter. I said, let me actually read it verbatim. I said, one of these years, Microsoft will have a Last of Us moment. And I'll, I guess I'll explain what I mean by a Last of Us moment. Um, I said one of these years, Microsoft will have a Last of Us moment that will that will show us their studios can create something greater. And all of you defending all of this mediocrity will look foolish because you were not a part of the wave that demanded more from them. But you will benefit from those who spoke up. In all of these jokes, what I want is Microsoft and the execs and and the developers to look at at their reputation of the games they release look at all these scores look at all the criticisms 
Look at look at all the 67s and 69s and 65s and and maybe 59s of all their games and just be like no more. No more. I want Phil Spencer and like I said the rest of the guys who are in charge and just to be like and and, and to I want them to get tired tired and fed up with mediocrity that's that's what i want i want them to have a sense of pride because when we look at even even when you look at nintendo i'm everybody knows i'm not like necessarily a fan of nintendo games but you know what i've always said about nintendo games quality that's one thing you cannot deny about nintendo games you could hate them all you want. You could, like, say their kitty is shit, and, and sometimes they're even, you know, living in the past. But their games are quality. We cannot deny that shit. Their games are not my cup of tea, mostly. But I can still appreciate the level of quality Nintendo has in their games. And Microsoft consistently lacks that. You can see that in a lot of Sony first parties. You can see that in a lot of Nintendo first parties. You cannot see that in a lot of Microsoft's first parties. A lot of these games Microsoft are producing. You you just can't. And like what going back to the Last of Us moment, all I all I really mean by that is like a defining moment where they create something original regardless of what you think about the last of us it was a turn it was a pivotal point for for sony you had you got to remember what was happening the pr disaster that was playstation and the playstation 3 and the sony brand last generation regardless of how you want to say yeah sure playstation 3 there were really good playstation 3 games you know there was there was i i loved i loved kill zone 2 I loved Uncharted 2. I loved the Resistance series. They still made great games. But the reputation of the PlayStation 3 and the brand was a disaster. To the point where they were selling off parts of their businesses. Selling off buildings. Selling off everything to the point where there was speculation that they were going out of business. Layoffs. All of this stuff. That's how, and yes, that had to do a lot with their other entity, entities and divisions besides the gaming division, but still, it, it was part of that. So, it was an absolute disaster for them last generation. And Last of Us didn't do it alone, but it was just a pivotal moment at that time that started to turn things around for them. It was one of the pivotal moments in a generation where Microsoft was dominating with blockbuster, critically acc acclaimed game after critically acclaimed game. I don't want to hear about, yeah, they caught up to the 360. That, that, that's not the point. I'm talking about what it was for us, the consumer. It was a disaster. So that's what I'm that's all I simply mean by you know a last of us moment. And I know there's people that are that are going to be like, "Oh, you know, Microsoft can't have one of those." I say, "Why the fuck not?" I think a lot of you forgot what Sony went through and came from last last generation. There there's no reason with Microsoft's resources and their capabilities. Yes, we've all can accept that their current and, and somewhat past studios lack the talent but there's no reason that they can't make the right moves and they have been to have a last of us moment and i'm not saying when i mean last of us moment i obviously don't mean create an exact game like last of us i mean create a magnum opus a masterpiece an unforgettable piece of work that people will remember forever and it will go on in like in legend 
generations after generations. People will remember it and it will become a turning point from what was negatively happen happening. All the mediocrity that was being released, all the misfortune that was happening. I want it to be that turning point. I want them to release something so good that they will, even their fans will have no reason to defend it. Because that's what's happening now. Every time Microsoft releases something, their fans have to defend it. Microsoft needs to release something so great, their fans can sit back and not say a fucking word because it's undeniable. Undeniable. Something so great that their fans don't have to make up conspiracy theories, that there's collusion amongst the media and they have it out and there's a there's a hit out on the Xbox brand. They're all trying to assassinate the reputation and the character of Microsoft games. There's media bias. Make something so great because when you make something so uncategorically amazing, even those that may not necessarily be interested in it cannot deny how great it is. True greatness cannot be denied because even with naysayers who go against, I guess, what the popular opinion is or the, or the general consensus of that product, you take God of War. There's some people that criticize God of War, but the fans of that don't typically feel a need to defend it because the, uh, the greatness of that game speaks for itself. You don't got to defend God of War. You don't, you don't got to. Somebody criticizes God of War, say it, it, it's mediocre, something wild like that. You, you don't really got to say nothing. Because they, they, they look, you don't got to defend that. The game defends itself. And that's a fact. Even me. There are people that feel like Witcher 3 and Persona are absolutely amazing games. I don't like either one of those games. But the fans of those games don't become super defensive, typically. They become a little bit rabid. They become a little bit aggressive. But they don't get super defensive. Because they feel like that product speaks for itself. They don't go, they don't gotta go out, go out on these damage control campaigns to defend Persona or Witcher because they feel like the game speaks for itself. These Microsoft games, and yes, we this is all subjective and opinion based with a lot of these things, but those games, these games Microsoft releasing can't even defend themselves. They don't got a leg to stand on, and that's a fact. I just want all of these, I, I can't even call y'all Microsoft fans, because if y'all were real fans, I think y'all would demand more. I think the people who are more critical of these Xbox titles that don't turn out to be good are more fans than, than you are. You are just going to reap the fruits of our labor a few years down the line when xbox tightens up when they change and start to produce products that the people really want so honestly all i want from all of you who are accepting and tolerating anything microsoft gives you all i want from you is a thank you later you need to thank all of us that are criticizing these products now because we are going to get you something better later. You can just thank us later. You can send us send us an, a, a thank you card in the mail, a edible arrangements, something. Because years from now, a few years from now, you're gonna get something much greater, much better than what you're getting now. And it will be all because of us who criticize what Microsoft and the Xbox brand is doing right now. It won't be because of you. It'll be because of us. That's all I got to say. Let me know what y'all think about this. I'm out of here. Peace.